I would like to tell you that at the popcorn cart outside the Imagination Pavilion, you can now get the Nigel Channing popcorn bucket. Yes, Disneyland is marking Magic Key Celebration Month next month with two free paper prints and two special photo pass magic shots. It's set to be the biggest celebration since Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. Paul, <laughs> <laughs> if Magic Kingdom attraction names were on it. Mm. Arabian Dumbo, uh, Space Dumbo, Space Dumbo, and regular Dumbo. <laughs> Celebrating 50 years of imagination. Uh, that would be Epcot. It's all right, point for Julie, good start. Oh, oh, we saw Kylo Ren for three seconds, okay. Like Ray talked to us for 30 seconds via a screen. Oh, thank you. This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Here now are the top Disney Park stories from around the world for January 24th, 2022. While Tron Light Cycle Run may not open at the Magic Kingdom for yet another year, there's always something to see at the coaster's construction site, and today was a landmark day. In fact, the first piece of the coaster's canopy roof is finally being installed. In the morning, we saw a tall crane had been rolled into the site. We didn't know what it was for, but then a few hours later, we saw the canopy piece being lowered into place and then crew members trying to place it on the roof. Uh, crews are still installing uh, vertebrae pieces and paneling across, uh, along the edge of the canopy's framework. That, of course, will hold these roof pieces that run across the entire top of that canopy. Um, this is a big deal. Obviously, they've been working on the canopy for a long time, and we are inching closer to maybe some sort of completion for this roller coaster. Speaking of large cranes, one has also rolled into Epcot today to install the Zandarian spaceship that'll be in front of Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Our eagle-eyed reporters spotted the first piece of the ship being moved into place today. We saw many crew members gathered in front of the show building, uh, which has almost been completed and repainted at this point. Uh, tall gray steel structure is now in the center of the courtyard. This will support the spaceship elements. In fact, you'll see one piece of the spaceship is already attached to it. So a landmark day again for both of these roller coasters that were supposed to open for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary, but now um, you're just going to see what happens. Of course, we know Guardians will open this summer at Epcot. There's still no date for Tron Light Cycle Run at the Magic Kingdom. On January 20th, Disney held a Central Orlando job fair to recruit call center cast members with a hiring bonus of $1,500. Other sales associate positions currently posted on the Disney Jobs website also offer a $1,500 bonus. And part-time and full-time dishwasher or steward positions currently offer a $1,000 bonus. Meanwhile, various full-time cook and chef positions are offering three or $6,000 bonuses pending job criteria. Disney has revealed the monthly themes for this year's Mickey Mouse, the main attraction merchandise collection, and they are exactly the same as they were for Minnie Mouse, the main attraction, which was released in 2020. The Mickey collection will be inspired by iconic attractions each month. According to the photo released, January is Space Mountain, February Pirates of the Caribbean, March Mad Tea Party, April It's a Small World, May is the Enchanted Tiki Room, June Peter Pan's Flight, July the Prince Charming Regal Carousel, specifically this time, not just a carousel as this isn't a shared collection with Disneyland. It celebrates 50 years of Disney World. August is Dumbo the Flying Elephant, September Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, October Haunted Mansion, November Jungle Cruise, and December themed to Cinderella Castle. Disney accidentally released the Vault Collection's 1970s Magic Kingdom map spirit jersey a few days too early, so last week when we told you it was now available, that apparently was not true, even though we were able to buy it at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Um, shortly after we posted, it was pulled from the shelves because it was supposed to be released today, January 24th, 2022. Um, and according to cast members as of yesterday, it was supposed to be released in most locations today, and in fact, of course, 
it was. What's funny is when guests went and asked the contemporary where the spirit jersey was, they said it had never been released, as if our photographs were, <laughs> were made up, as if we had just photoshopped spirit jerseys onto a shelf. Obviously, we did not. It came out early. It was pulled. And then today, it was finally released. Uh, also released today was the Vault Collection Vintage Magic Kingdom Harvey's Bag. The bag is a lilac color and themed to a retro Magic Kingdom map. On the front of the bag, Magic, uh, Mickey leads a parade, followed by his pals Minnie, Pluto, Donald, Jose, Huey, Dewey, Louie, Daisy, and Goofy. And the back of the bag has a vintage map of the Magic Kingdom. The tote is $218, and uh, being Harvey's, it's made of seatbelts. That's how, what they do. Uh, new Crocs featuring that Magic Kingdom map are also made available today. These were previewed a couple months ago. They match that spirit jersey, of course. A charm on the Crocs has a vintage Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World logo, and a monorail charm is on the ankle strap. These were at the Main Street Cinema this morning in Magic Kingdom. They're $64.99. According to DisneyDining.com, Walt Disney World pianist Mark Anderson has passed away at the age of 66. Anderson was a fan favorite of Walt Disney World goers. He was known for his incredible talent as a pianist and performer. He performed throughout Walt Disney World, but was most notably uh, at Casey's Corner in the Magic Kingdom. Fans took to Reddit to express their thoughts and condolences. Anderson's obituary states he, quote, passed peacefully surrounded by his family early morning Sunday, January 16th. Anderson and his wife, Laura Lee, performed together at the Disneyland Hotel as part of the house band there in 1984. Anderson then went on to become an entertainer at Tokyo Disneyland and then ultimately started playing piano on Main Street at the Magic Kingdom in 1988. Our condolences go out to the friends and family of Mark Anderson and to all who admired him. A tremendous loss in the Disney Parks entertainment world. Names have been removed from the rafts that take guests across the rivers of America to Tom Sawyer Island at the Magic Kingdom. Cast members were preparing the rafts this morning, but they weren't sure what would happen with the names. The names were previously on these planks sticking out of the center of each raft. Most notably, the Injun Joe name has been removed. This is the latest inclusivity move by Disney as they do their part in their new diversity initiative. Several characters moved back to their old meet and greet locations at Epcot over the weekend on January 22nd. As with all other character sightings, guests must remain physically distanced and may not physically interact with the characters, but they are there to chat and take a photograph. So Donald Duck is back at his outdoor location at the Mexico Pavilion. Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph and Joy from Inside Out are both back inside at the Imagination Pavilion as well. Of course, Joy has occasionally appeared outside, but this is her big return to her permanent location. These are open from 10 a.m. Uh, daily, starting again January 22nd. Cherry Dole Whip has arrived at Refreshment Outpost in Epcot, replacing Coconut Lime Dole Whip. The cherry is available on its own or as a swirl with pineapple. We ordered both a cherry and a swirl soft serve. Unfortunately, they were too soft to be served in cones alone, so they threw them in cups for us, so the photos aren't great, but um, they cost $5.25 to review on our website. The 2022 Epcot International Festival of the Arts returned last week. We've been enjoying the beautiful sights, sounds, and flavors of the fine arts. We were surprised to find out a uh, long-standing staple of the festival, the artist palette jumbo chocolate chip cookie, has been altered. The cookie is completely different from the previous version. It's much uh, softer, more edible, and a little bigger than before. The icing is also a much better quality, coming in red, yellow, and blue. It comes with that little paintbrush, so you can paint that icing all over the cookie if you'd like. It's not going to change your life, but it's a good supermarket-esque quality cookie. Um, we found it for $5.50 at the Refreshment Outpost, but it's at many locations. Of course, if you want to check out reviews of every single food studio, at the festival, you could check out www.nt.com. We also have a video right here on the channel of me trying every single new item from this year. If you are a Central Florida local and want to join the crew of the Halcyon, it might be your lucky day. Disney has posted a few new positions for the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. Getting kind of close here, guys. Disney is asking for online submissions at this time, and Walt Disney World is seeking the following roles. Cruise director, ship mechanic, and galactic superstar. These, of course, are entertainment roles, not actually those roles. You'll you be playing a character that is one of those things. It seems that Batuu is receiving shipment again because guests are finally receiving their cardboard carrying boxes with their purchase of a droid at the Droid Depot. Both Droid Depot and Savi's Workshop ran out of their carrying cases, have been providing guests plastic bags instead. And although the boxes have returned to Droid Depot, the Savi's Workshop is still handing out those plastic bags. 
Also worth noting, I know some of you are going to ask, uh, they have started to get lightsabers again. Just the other day, the dark saber was in stock at Doc on Dars, and uh, that sold out. But then they did have three others. I think they had the Darth Maul, the Luke, and the Leia lightsabers available. So it's spotty, but you can still find some legacy lightsabers uh, in the land. The Q saga continues at my favorite attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Hollywood Studios. That's a joke, by the way. Last year, we reported how these wall decals in the room just before the pre-show were completely destroyed by guests and then later fixed. Well, now, well, they're destroying themselves. It wasn't a very long-term fix as they're now bubbling from behind. Uh, the decals just coming off on their own. Uh, this is a case where you can't even blame guests again. They, they can't, the guests can't get underneath the decal, really. So, um, you know, I've, I have died on this hill for the last two or three years with Imagineering using these wall decals everywhere. They never work out. They're always damaged, whether it's from guests on their own. You know, we can't remember when we used to do the maintenance report and in Toy Story Mania, that new first room of the queue, the decal literally was just falling from the top of the ceiling where no one could reach it. So... Uh, maybe stop doing these. Either get real wallpaper or paint walls, because this does not work in a theme park. Last week, we reported how Kevin, the giant walk-around character from Disney Pixar's Up, would be making her return to Animal Kingdom. Well, she has indeed returned, just not like we hoped. We're used to seeing Kevin roam around Discovery Island, but now she has returned as a stationary distanced meet-and-greet. Although the My Disney Experience app still lists Kevin as roaming, you can find Kevin right before walking into Dinoland USA. Our full video of our interaction with Kevin can be found right here on the channel. We went on over to the boathouse at Disney Springs to try the new pineapple upside down cake in honor of the 50th anniversary. And ultimately it ended up being our absolute favorite dessert we've tried so far. It's a traditional uh, pineapple upside down cake with a rum glaze and, and uh, some whipped cream on top. The dessert cost $10, the full review on our website. Find out why you need it. Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground, of course, celebrating its 50th anniversary as well with merchandise. Guests at the resort can now purchase a Checkers Game tablecloth and a set with a patch and magnets. The tablecloth includes wood sliced checkers featuring Chip and Dale. In the game area, the tablecloth is patterned like different colors of wood. The full cloth is 52 by 52 and uh, pictured on the back of the box. The tablecloth is lined with pine trees and various buildings from Fort Wilderness. The same design is also featured on the box. It's $79.99. Then there's this set, which includes one embroidered patch and two magnets. The patch is shaped like a triangular pennant and embroidered with Mickey taking a hike and the Fort Wilderness logo. One magnet has the logo for the Fort Wilderness Railroad, and the other is a large version of the Fort Wilderness logo with a 50 on top. Both magnets have a wood finish, and the set costs $19.99. Though the beloved dinner show is yet to return at Pioneer Hall, you can pick up a Pioneer Hall-shaped ornament featuring the fan-favorite hoopty doo musical review, as it also celebrates 50 years of Fort. We found it at the Meadow Trading Post. The ornament is shaped like a tiny model of Pioneer Hall. On the back of the ornament, a few of the hoop doo performers are center stage. Uh, the ornament costs $29.99. Another new resort-inspired mini ear headband has arrived. Uh, these Disney's Pop Century Resort ears can be found at the resort's gift shop. Everything pop, shopping, and dining. The ears are covered in white and black sequins to resemble records. The bow in the center has some colorful flower power, and it's topped with a pop century charm. The inner lining of the headband is purple, while the outside is blue. The ears are $29.99. Disneyland Paris made their previously teased exciting announcement, which turned out to be a partnership with Rhino Shield, resulting in new 30th anniversary phone cases. This is a real thing that happened. They made a big tease, and it ended up being just phone cases. The protective case features the Disneyland Paris 30th anniversary logo. The use of the Twilight Zone Tower Terror in the teaser turns out to just be a reference to the phone case being drop resistant and is not at all related to the Tower of Terror at all. Disneyland Paris, meanwhile, has announced they will be revealing more details about their actual 30th anniversary on January 25th at 11 a.m. CET. That's 5 a.m. Eastern time if you, for some reason, want to stay up that late. It seems the reveal will have more interesting information about the celebration, more so than just a phone case. With the beginning of Totally Minnie Mouse at Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea, also comes new souvenir dessert items themed to the event. There were three special items on offer, bundled with two treats. 
the mixed berry cake with a souvenir plate for 850 yen, and the raspberry mousse and strawberry jelly with a souvenir cup for 850 as well. You can find these at the Sweetheart Cafe, Plaza Pavilion Restaurant, Hungry Bear, Grandma Sarah's Kitchen, Tomorrowland Terrace, Pan Galactic Pizza Port, my personal favorite, and Plasma Rays Diner at Tokyo Disneyland. Meanwhile, at Disney Sea, they're at Cafe Portofino, Zambini Brothers, Mama Biscotti's, New York Deli, the Yucatan Base Camp Grill, Casbah Food Court, and Volcania Restaurant. A souvenir lunch case is also available for an extra 1,100 yen. You can add the lunch case to your set at many of those locations. All of these souvenir items are available through March 30th or while supplies last. Of course, if you're looking for Disneyland Resort news, be sure to check out Disneyland News Today every Thursday right here on the channel. Last week's episode is obviously still here for you to watch. And for the absolute latest Disney Parks news, head on over to WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms, including TikTok. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. Please be sure to comment underneath. You can also support the entire team behind this program by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today. Have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Now on WDWNT, it's Boxed In. Boxed In is a casually chaotic show featuring WDWNT personalities Eric Morton and Jill Diffendahl unboxing Disney merchandise and viewer packages along with a few friends and a bossy little Pomeranian. Keep up with the new Disney merchandise releases, seasonal releases, festival merchandise, limited edition merchandise, wishables, pins, and more. Come join us Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on WDWNT.